Welcome to Tony and Cynthia Brazelton Ministries. Be sure to listen for more information after the message. So we've got to learn to respond to God because it's so important. Go ahead, watch this Proverbs chapter 19, verse 21. And I want to read this out of the New Living Translation. Learning to respond to God is so important. Look at what he says in verse 21. He said, you make many plans, but the Lord's purpose will prevail. Can you see that? He says, you can make many plans, but the Lord's purpose will prevail. The word prevail means to override, to overrule. It means to succeed, to win, to stand. God's purposes will override your plans. God's purposes will, will overrule my plans. So, I like what the Amplifier says it this way. Many plans are in a man's mind, but it is the Lord's purpose for him that will stand. So, that means God's purpose is more important than my plans. See, when he speaks to you, you don't respond because your plan is more important than his purpose. But we got to realize that God's purpose is more important than my plan. So that means I need to discover God's purpose and then get the plan. Are, Are you hearing me? Find God's purpose for your life and then make your plans. That's what he means by Matthew 6, But seek ye first. <laughs> See, what? You got to know God's purpose, and then you can write your plans. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then notice, and all these things will be what? Added to you. Do you see that? So it's not, it's not do that. And then uh, put a plan to achieve that. No, 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 no. Because God's purpose will always win out. God's purpose will succeed. God's purpose will stand for your life and mine. So what we need to do is discover what's God's plan for my life. What's his plan for you being single? What is his plan for your finances? What is his plan for your eating? What is his plan for you driving? What is his plan for you living? What is his plan where you go? What is his plan for where you work? What is his plan for your life? Because God's plan will succeed. And that's what happened to me. God's plan was for me to walk off of my job and I succeeded. Didn't make sense in the natural. But God's plan for me was to start a church called Victory. You were part of the plan. That's why you're sitting in something God said to me. His purposes will stand. So when you find the purpose, then you make your plans. Psalms 15, 115, verse 16. Learning to respond to God is so important. All things, first of all, will be added when you respond to God first. Seek ye first. All will be added. Listen to, oh, let, me, let me hurry up. Psalms 115, verse 16. He says, he says, the heavens, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth he has given to the children of men. Do you see that? So God rules what? The heavens. But he's given men what? The earth. Can you see that? The earth is man's dominion. Yes. Heaven is God's dominion. And if you don't get that, you, you, you gonna, you, you're not going to respond correctly to God. See, he says very clear, the heavens, even the heavens are the Lord. That's mine. Don't touch that. That's what God said. Don't touch that. But I've given you something to rule. I've given you a territory. That territory is called earth. 
He said that in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. He said, let us make man how in our image and, and after, according to our likeness and let them. Somebody say, let them. Let them. Key word, let them. Which means God has made man responsible. Let them, watch this, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle. Watch this, over all the earth. Let them, let them, let them have dominion over all the earth. Remember, heaven is mine, God says, the earth is your territory. That is why it's necessary for you and I to pray. We are petitioning God to bring his influences to the earth. And if you don't get that, you don't understand. See, here's what you don't understand. You, you ever, God knows that you have a need, but he'll ask you to ask him for it. When he already knows you have the need. Why? Because the earth he's given to you as your territory and for you to influence the earth. Remember, you are in partnership. You are in fellowship with him. And he takes nothing out of the bank account without you and you take nothing out of the bank account without him. So it's in fellowship. It's in this oneness. It's in talking about this that you release heaven to invade the earth. God will not do anything in the earth without a man. If my people called by my name will humble themselves and seek my face and pray, fellowship. I will hear from heaven and what? I will heal their land. Why? I have given the land, this earth, the territory to you. Let them have dominion. So if you're sitting back, God, God, do something. No, you're the responsible. Now watch this, makes this Matthew 18. He says, I say unto you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Better translation said, whatever you bind here that is already bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth that is already loosed in heaven. And again, I say to you that if two of you shall agree on earth concerning anything that they shall ask, it will be done of what? My father, where is he at? In heaven. See the fellowship? Heaven fellowshipping with the earth. Heaven has sent his children to the earth. He's given his children a territory to rule like a father ruling in heaven. Glory. Do you understand? That's fellowship. And, and there's a partnership. There's a sharing together. There is a partaking of. There is a contribution, not only from heaven, but from you. And so God is looking for you to go to him and begin to talk. Notice, until you bind it on earth, it ain't going to be bound. Until you loose it, it cannot be loosed. Until you come in agreement, any two on earth is touching anything that they agree on earth. It shall be done. It shall be done. Of my father, where is he at? In heaven. So when is father doing? When two people come in agreement on the earth. Say fellowship. fellowship. God is working through fellowship, not socializing. That's, that's, that's all right, but that's not Fellowship. Fellowship speaks of a commitment. It speaks of being one. It speaks of partnering together. It, it speaks of sharing together. Sharing. It speaks of knowing a person. I don't necessarily know you because we drink coffee. You're going to let me know the best part of you. But if I marry you, I'm going to know you. That's fellowship. <laughs> fellowship. That's, that's fellowship. That's an exchange of my heart to your heart, your heart to my heart. That's 
I, that's deep. Well, that's what God's calling you with his son. Learning to respond to God. The way Jesus taught us to pray is related to God's purpose for our lives. We notice in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus is teaching on prayer, and he says to him in verse 17, do not use vain repetitions as the heathens do. Don't talk to me like that. You don't even know me. If you got to keep repeating yourself, oh, no, 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 don't do that. He said, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them for your father. Father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. <laughs> so in this manner, therefore, pray our father, which is in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day, what? Our daily bread. Now, he's not saying don't pray about your needs. He's saying this is not something you need to labor over. You don't need to labor over your need. Why? Because your father already know you have needs. So we don't have to have labor where our needs are concerned. We don't have to get up every morning with a need consciousness toward why I'm going to work, what I got to do. I got, I got to go sick because you're so need-minded. Your father know that you have these needs. In Matthew chapter 7, Jesus continues to talk about prayer. And he says in verse 7, he says, Ask, and it will be given unto you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. And Amplified says it this way, keep on asking. And it will be given to you. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who keeps on. Asking receives, and he will keep on seeking, fine. And to him who keeps on knocking, the door will be open. Now, Jesus has just moved from basic needs of life to your dreams, to your wants. Amen. See, in chapter 6, he says, don't, don't, don't labor over your needs. I already know that. But in chapter 7, he said, labor over these. But he's not talking about laboring over your needs. He's talking about labor over your wants and dreams. You don't get it. He see, he, why? He needs you to be persistent. Because persistence in prayer changes us to receive the prayers that we're asking. Amen. Remember, the word is what? You com I'm commending you to God and to the word, which is able to build you up. Listen, God wants to answer some dreams. Amen. He's more interested in your dreams. So he's saying to ask and keep on asking. Knock and keep on knocking. Keep, keep it up. Why? Until it manifests. Why? Because I need to change in order to receive what I'm asking for. Do you understand? You, the, the change has to be, I have to change in order to receive what God, God don't want to give me nothing that's going to kill me. Now, he wants you to ask where well, your dreams are concerned. And he wants you to have your dreams, but he realized that I have to be developed to carry a dream without killing myself. Amen. You know, God dropped half of a billion dollars in your hand. Man, you ain't even going to church no more. Woo, -hoo, Jesus. Woo, -hoo, Jesus. Woo -hoo. You ain't, you, we won't never see you in church. And if you usher, ah, the last days of my ushering is over. Huh? Now, he wants to give you that billion. But if he give you the billion in the condition you're in, it'll kill you. 
It reminded me of something I saw on YouTube. They played this trick on this guy who they told him he won the lottery. And he thought he won a lottery. And they, play, they, they all got together and, and, and showed him his ticket. He went crazy. And it was like that big one, like, was like a, you know, 700 million or something. Like, he went crazy now. And he just went off. You know, he called his office, cussed his balls out. <laughs> and they was trying to stop, stop, stop. I ain't never coming back. And this is how I feel about you. Bam. <laughs> then he turned to his girlfriend and told him he was having an affair with somebody else. He just lost it. And we were, and so by then, everybody in the room was like, we didn't mean for it to be like this, but he dissed everybody in the room. And I never liked you anyway. And, and so, the, I mean, he talked about everybody in the room because he thought he had money. See, it killed him. And they ain't got no job, he ain't got no friends. <laughs> so God says, ask. I remember, you know, early years in ministry, you know, we would read scripture that we supposed to raise the dead. So every funeral, I'm trying to raise somebody out of casket. That was just me, me and my wife. And we would get together, we gonna do it this day. Yeah. We raising them up. Yeah. So they sit them out there and then the family come around, Pastor, you gonna raise them up? Absolutely. Man, I done grabbed so many dead bodies, lifted them up out of the casket, shook them a few times, scared everybody but heaven. Nobody moved. I've been to the morgues. They roll them out and everywhere. And I'm, satara prate pro ko Veins everywhere, nobody moving. So after that, you know, city, I done did it in city after city. I finally came to God. I says, God, wait a minute. <laughs> now, I read these signs shall follow them that believe. I don't have a sign following me. What's up? <laughs> and his Lord said, uh-uh. he said, son, keep at it. Don't stop. Why? He was building me up so that I could take possession of that inheritance. And it did come a time when I came in the hospital and I spoke to a woman. They said, was dead. I walked and I said, Dad's here. Time for you to wake up. Boop, popped right back up. Everybody thought she was dead. Now let's look at another prayer. Remember, we're talking about learning how to respond to God. Oh, my. It's, 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 it's the difference between receiving and not receiving. It's the difference between the supernatural and the lack of the supernatural. It's the difference between walking in a life where you have no limits to living a life where you're totally limited. And it's almost crazy. God will speak to you about something that looks like it, 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 it's, it's crazy, but what he's doing, he's stripping the limits off of you so you can have a limitless life. Most people don't know what that tithing and giving is about. It's to take the limit of money off of you. He's trying to break the financial limits on your life. Why? Because you are in fellowship with a limitless God. But then you, in fellowship, you're responding in limits. Remember, to be in fellowship means to be one with, in partnership with. I'm now a partaker of. That means whatever he's able to do, I'm able to do. There's an account in his name and my name. If in that account he raises the dead, in that account I raise the dead. If in that account there is no concern about money, then why do I have a concern about money? Not enough fellowship. Worry is not enough fellowship. Anxiety, not enough fellowship. What do I care if the government never worked? I'm in fellowship. You understand? 
I'm in fellowship with God. Who is the provider of all things that pertain to life and godliness? He didn't say he, he's the provider of all things that pertain to your job. But pertains to life. So when you step into your purpose, your purpose may not pay you the money you're worth. But that's where you're in fellowship. Let me move on. Psalms chapter 67. I'll close with this. Verse 1. Are you there? It says, be merciful to us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us. Why? That your way or your nature may be known on the earth. And notice, in your salvation among all nations. So in other words, here's what he said. Be merciful. Bless us, favor us. Why? Why? that the nations may know what you are like. He's asking God to do what? Be merciful to them. Asking God to bless them, to the favor them, so that the nations will know what God's like. If they don't see the blessings on your life, they have a right to question who God is. So God, do something to me, with me, to prove to them who you are and what you are like. Are you hearing me? People who carry a revelation of who God is, his mercy, his blessings, his favor, his presence, causes the world to know who God is and causes salvation to come to the nations. Can you see how salvation comes to the nation? They see God on your life. They see God on my life. They see the blessings. They see the favor. They see the presence. And when they see that, nations will give their life to God. Verse 3. That's why we've got to be in fellowship with God. In fellowship, you don't have a consciousness of need. In fellowship, you get to live in your dreams, and then the nations will fall down and want the God you serve. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And watch the Father's interest in your desires again. Verse 3. He says, let the people what? Praise you. Oh, God, let all the people praise you. Oh, verse 4. Let the nations be glad and sing with joy. Can you see the connection? The nations are singing because what they saw on you. For you shall judge the people righteously and govern the nations of the earth. Selah, let the people praise thee, O God. Verse 5, let all the people praise you, then the earth. Then the earth. Then the earth shall yield its increase. No, wait, wait, wait. You almost missed it. When people begin to see the favor on your life, when people begin to see the blessings on your life, when they see the presence on their life, people will run to God for salvation and the people of the earth will begin to praise him. And then the Bible says, then all the earth shall yield its increase. God on God shall bless us. God shall bless us. And all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Got to know how to respond to God. Did you see what happened here? <sighs> Wonderful. Here's the people praying to God. Bless me. Favor me. Show yourself strong in my life that the people will know who you are and they're going to want your salvation. All the people praise him. Let all the people praise him. Then the earth 
will yield its increase. We need to give them something to praise God for. The blessings on your life. The prosperity on your life. We pray that you've been blessed by the word of God today. Connect with us online at tcbm.org or contact us by phone at 866-GET-TCBM. That's 866-438-8226. And remember, 1 John 4.17 says, As Jesus is, so are we in this world.